a FAM production for all things mattress. FAM.news. We had a conversation about tattoos, and there was an action taken by one of the people on this show today. I don't even know what's going to happen in this grand reveal. And we're also going to reveal the big plan behind Amazon putting together furniture in people's houses. People are talking about it, but they're not telling you the real story behind Amazon and what their plans are when they get into the furniture assembly service business. That's all happening today, baby. Welcome to the Dose Marco Show with Mark Kinsley and Mark Quinn, where mattress and furniture leaders gather to grow, get the inside scoop, tell stories, and take tequila shots. Uno, dos, tequila! Welcome aboard. Here's your passport to a planet filled with the mattress industry's brightest minds and biggest ideas. Meet your guides. I'm Mark Kinsley, president and CEO of Englander. And I'm Mark Quinn, co-founder of Spink & Co. and VP of Sherwood Betting. Together, they are Dos Marcos. The galaxy's greatest mattress podcast has liftoff in three, two, one. brand new salon that's opening up in London and it's an Amazon salon. It's the very first Amazon salon. They're going to have augmented reality where you can visualize what your hair would look like in a different color. Or maybe if you're thinking about, Hey, I got to throw it back to the eighties and get that bowl cut. You can visualize what the bowl cut is going to look like. And it made me think of you Quinn, because we were having a conversation about tattoos and I thought it'd be really cool if there was an app that allowed you to visualize the tattoo on your body before you got it, we were having these conversations about this tattoo you were thinking about getting. So the people want to know what happened. <laughs> well, I got the tattoo. And now keep in mind, Kinsley, I am 52 years old and somehow have avoided uh, getting ink. My brother has a tattoo. I, it, you know, just a lot of people I know have tattoos. And it's just different than when I was coming up, like tattoos were for bikers and people out of prison. And uh, today that's not the case. So uh, anyway, yeah, my when my mom passed, we were going through the house and there was a mirror and she would always like give me notes and things. And she always wanted me to put post it notes on my mirror, you know, positive affirmations, things like that. And so in her house, she had written on a mirror, thank God. And so at the end of the day, it really kind of comes down to that. Like no matter what chaos is going on, if you, if you're a person of faith in particular, then you can kind of focus on that and it kind of puts everything in perspective. So just think that focus on that part. So I always liked that. And, um, so anyway, I got a uh, tattoo. So I had the, the artist, the graphic artist take her handwriting exactly and turn that into a tattoo and then i put uh her name and then my uncle jack quinn's name because he passed during COVID too two very important people in my world and so that was it i got a tattoo so anyway it's kind of crazy and let me tell you man like 80 percent of it didn't hurt but the 20 percent hurt like a bitch i'm telling you it was like someone like taking a knife and carving something into your into your skin so it was it was fine but there were parts that were not very pleasant and I didn't right, drink get... anything going in. I'm just like, I, I took a stick, a piece of leather rawhide stick, and I just chomped down on it. And I just toughed it out. Quinn was a dog on a bone. All right, well, are you going to do a grand reveal? Well, I want to. Yeah, I could show you. It's on my butt. Do you think that's okay to show that on the, on the, like, if you're watching this show, you can go to our YouTube station or go to the fam. You can actually watch the video. I, I got to show you my butt. We've been trying to figure out, like, how, what do we do to take this show to the next level? And I've been advocating for showing skin. So if you're going straight to the keister, I'm all for yeah. it. So stand no, up, buddy. I just think it's, it's, it's a ratings thing for sure. No, it's <laughs> actually right here on my pack. And you ready? I can't show you all of it. And it's still got the plastic stuff on it. See that? Nice. Can you see if that? You're watching on video. Uh, Quinn is not showing any nip. Um, no. Although I have to say, I never thought there would be a scenario or situation where you would text me a picture of you shirtless. By the way, you look like you're flexing. Were you flexing? <laughs> I was not, no, I, I was telling you that's sad if that looked like me flexing. I, but it, you know, it wasn't too bad. But you know, what did I what did I tell you with that picture? If you said you send ever, it to everybody you know, and post it no, on our social media sites. No, I did not. I said, if you ever send that picture, 
to anyone, I'll kick your butt. But anyway, so I, I could do it that way and just show you. But I'm not world class yeah. at very many things, but I'm world class at being able to access photos of Quinn in the moment the conversation comes up where I need to show somebody that photo. Um, <laughs> you, might, you might remember the Bigfoot photo that I very quickly pull up whenever I need to show somebody that you fell and got attacked by Bigfoot. And uh, I don't think this is going to be any different. Here's the thing, though. We want to keep our audience. We don't want to turn people away. And if you post a picture of me shirtless, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a significant drop off in listenership. So 10x increase that. in subscribers skewing heavily toward women. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, Bridget. Thank you, though, Bridget. I'm I'm cracking up because of how absurd that is. But anyway, so that was kind of cool, man. And I, I, I really toiled with it because I'm like, gosh, do I do that or not? Did I try to talk I'm you out of it? I'm glad I Or did, did I just no, guide you, you through really, some possibilities? You weren't really talking me out of it. You were more kind of going, huh, eh, you know, if it's your thing. It's not my thing. But if you if you want to do it, that's fine for you. Do you, Quinn? That was kind of the, the tone of that, I think, a little bit. But Well, anyway, I'm glad so. you're happy. I love uh, the, the commemoration mom and that it's yeah. meaningful and significant and uh that's su super cool man and it's right on your heart yeah. too right over the heart no doubt so anyway there you go but how are you doing man we've got a lot going on we had a great day of strategy this week um and, and came up with some really great thinking in terms of like where the fam goes so that's kind of fun and we got to spend some time in person so it's kind of cool isn't it that uh, all that's kind of starting to come back a little bit yeah, yeah. And we got to talk about, you know, how we continue to serve our sponsors like Nationwide and Door Counts and, yes. and even Furniture Today's betting conference, which we'll tell you about how to get a special offer on on that. But man, it was super cool to see what Nationwide did at market because so many independent retailers couldn't be there. So the whole crew, Mike Darrow and Jeff Rose and Johnny Lamp and Chad Fisher and Mike Whitaker and Everybody behind the scenes grabbed cameras, went out there, went to their vendor partners, and pretty much brought Las Vegas market to their independent dealers and snagged 26,000 video views along the way. So, I mean, hold on. No doubt. Great job, Nick. Nationwide team. Kinsley, we had, uh, I was doing some Instagram Live stuff there, but they took a crew, and I kept seeing them in and out of showrooms. I ran into them several times, but... If you guys go to the fam.news and read this article, we have posted a lot of the videos from the betting centric companies that Nationwide interviewed. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this always goes back, Kinsley, to Nationwide's purpose, and their purpose is to serve the retailer. And so for a lot of people that couldn't be there in person, didn't want to be there in person, Nationwide brought the show to them once again, and they did a brilliant job of it. Uh, you know, Glenn, um, you and I know Glenn, one of the camera guys at Nationwide. He's just an awesome guy. He was working his butt off as well as the rest of the Nationwide guys. So anyway, check this stuff out. Great content. Well done. 26,000 views, Kinsley. That's the importance of creating content that's relevant to your audience. They crushed it. So uh, bravo to them. And another great partner of ours, Door Counts. They keep losing their minds because they keep this promotion going. So tell us about that one. <laughs> nice. Poor Jerry. Uh, Poor Jerry, Jerry. Uh, you need to let us know if you want us to keep doing this because uh, his pipeline is is full of dealers who are, are bringing Door Counts on. And we, we love to hear that. We love to see that because Door Counts, I mean, is the ultimate retail sales cloud solution. But I mean, it's it's this, this magical way for you to capture what's happening in your store and make meaning of it. And that's the thing about it. You can get all this data, but you got to make meaning of it. And you got to hopefully use it for fun. So yeah, door counts is snapping a, a photo of somebody, assigning them to a salesperson on an upboard. And it's a contact management solution, CRM, and all of that stuff. But uh, you got to use, I think you need to use it like Matt Man uses it. So Andrew the Schlesser, he's a uh, show. He's got his own podcast on the fam. He on the world's most super retail. And what he decided to do is, is think about it like this. Energy attracts foot traffic. So every day when he walks in his store, Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress, one of their four stores, he walks in and he uses the door counts camera because it's automatic and he uses the door counts dance. And so he's striking a pose and he, we have all these up on, on one of our, on the episode with him on fam.news, but he's <laughs> cracking me up because all his team now does this. And so the 
person to walk in it's to snap the door counts dance and it's just such a cool creative way to take something that's like a process or you know kind of a technology tool and turn it into fun and the more you're having fun you've already won and we think you can have fun with door counts and the door counts team and actually make more money and pr you can prove to yourself with a 90-day free trial that you're going to make more money and so go to doorcounts.com tell them dos marcos sent you get a 90-day free trial and if you don't want to use door counts at the end of it jerry's going to peel off 150 bucks hand it to you and say thank you and if you have any feedback we'd love to hear it so there's no risk whatsoever get started at doorcounts.com today and what we got to get started with uh here in a moment is talking about amazon getting into the furniture assembly business but before we do that time to get together virtually one more at the furniture today conference um if you subscribe to our newsletter, we have a special offer for retailers, but you got to subscribe to our email newsletter at fam.news because it's the easiest way for us to send it to you and link to it. But Jessica Byerly and the whole team uh, at Furniture Today, Sheila Longamara, like all the team is getting together on a fantastic betting conference this year, curated and designed to help sleep and betting retailers elevate the consumer experience. And you know gosh, in light of the topic to? we're going to talk about today with Amazon elevating the consumer experience, yeah. you want to know how you can compete. And dude, fire out of the gates with Doug Stevens, who's been on our show. I can't wait to see Doug Stevens speak at the betting conference. No, he's, you know, he was on our show and did a great job. He wrote a book and we had a fantastic time talking to him and you know, in the book we wrote, Come Back to Bed, we were inspired by a lot of the things that he said. We tied it back to our industry specifically. So he's going to be on stage again. He always has great stuff. Cannot wait to see that. So do not miss Doug Stevens at the betting conference. Kinsley, you got dates there for this show? We got dates uh, May 18th through the 20th. May 18th through the 20th. And if you want more information, I'm typing it in right now. Can you hear my? I hear you soft type. Boom. Bettingconference.com. Hey, uh, today on the show, this is. I'm so irritated. Why? Honestly. Why? I, I'm irritated because talking to AM to PM, Alex Milstein, we're like, dude, mm. he, he brought into our, into, a, into our field of view. He's like, hey, because um, he's a managing editor of the fam. And so he's doing all this work to put up all this great material. And we just kind of give, you know, some thoughts and guidance with our industry knowledge. And he's like, Amazon is getting into the furniture assembly business, which means, you know, if you buy, uh, you know, a table and Amazon ships it to you, you're going to have the option for somebody to come to your house and then put it together. Sounds pretty simple. Lots of retailers do this today. But the, all the stories that we were seeing out there, we're hyper focused on this idea that Amazon's going to put together furniture. And you and I were like, wait a minute. Do you understand how significant this is? What it does to the landscape of existing furniture and mattress dealers and what they're actually trying to do. And so we, we've got this article going up on fam.news called the bigger story behind Amazon's furniture assembly service plans. But we, we wanted to preview it here and give you the deets on the Dos Marcos podcast, because there is a bigger story behind this. There's a bigger story, and I'm actually reading the book, Kinsley, called The Everything Store. So it's about Amazon, and it takes you through their history and uh, the history of disruption. It takes you through a lot of their failures. They've had so many massive failures. However, uh, they've obviously disrupted retail in such a significant way early on people would underestimate amazon and refer to them as like a lands in or just another product catalog to their own peril because if you think about a lot of the companies that are no longer around toys r us borders uh tower records uh, a lot of the categories they get in they just go hard even zappos they tell a great story about going after zappos driving down their stock price getting themselves into the shoe business to a point where they could actually buy zappos so these guys are a force, obviously, everywhere they go. And now that they're creating this network, now there are people like Fragile Pack and JB Hunt and people that have final mile delivery services. So, um, you know, 
that's already out there, Kinsley, but you know, for Amazon to create their own network and do it the way that only they can do it and throw the resources into what they can do, it puts them direct indirect competition, we think, more with brick and mortar in the furniture space more than they've ever been. And well, specifically with Wayfair, they're going after Wayfair in a big way. Yeah, and let's but let's specifically tell people what okay, so what's the bigger bigger story? Here's the bigger story. It's not the fact that they're going in and they can compete, you know, with having done $89 billion in revenue. You know, that, that's not the story. The bigger story here really comes from Scott Galloway's book. So if you don't know Scott Galloway, he's a really smart guy. Um, he's an advertising theorist, author, professor, and his book, Post-Corona, From Crisis to Opportunity, talks about these gangster moves that Amazon has made over the years. And here's the headline. Amazon takes cost centers and turns them into profit drivers. They take things that cost the business money, like warehousing, pick and pack, and they turn it into a profit driver because early on, of course, warehousing something and getting it shipped out the door is a huge cost. But when you're really good at it, then people start using your warehouses and your pick and pack technology and people to ship their own stuff. And that's exactly what happened. So they took what's a huge cost center and they turned it into a profit driver. Now, another example of that, Amazon Web Services. When you're powering something as robust as Amazon.com and all their other web properties, you have to develop a technology stack of hardware and software that is the best in the world. And it's reliable. And all of a sudden, whenever you have that, everybody else wants to use that technology and build their products or their software, or their services, or their SaaS on top of that. So now Amazon took a huge cost center, which was all their web services, and turned it into a profit driver. I think they're going to do the same thing with healthcare. Can you imagine the amount of money that Amazon, with all their employees, has to pay in healthcare? And if they turn that into a product they can sell to other people because they develop the best in class healthcare services all of a sudden you have a platform you can build on top of. So let's come to reality right now, bring it home for you. If they have a network of people that are able to better put together furniture and manage the process and the service and the takeaway and everything that goes along with furniture assembly, they have a platform. They have a platform that they can then sell to other people who wanna use that service. So then wave over stock, Walmart, whoever, probably not Walmart, but whoever it is that would want to, you know, bolt it on top of that mattress brands, they're going to have people and a network and a process and a whole system of delivery and takeaway and all the different check boxes they have to tick along the way that can take as a cost center and turn to a proper driver. Now, here's the other thing real quickly. Can you imagine the amount of money that it costs Amazon or Wayfair whenever a product does not work, a furniture or mattress product does not work for that consumer. So now they're probably gonna take cost out of that process by simply having people there to make sure it's put together correctly. All the bolts are tightened, questions are asked. There's a friendly face there saying, hey, is there anything else to ensure that customer doesn't return it? I know even right here in Northwest Arkansas, there's a huge warehouse full of furniture, dent and ding, just from Wayfair and they have big quarterly sales. So that's, I think where this is going, it's a platform and that can impact you as a retailer because now the expectations are being set, which is what Amazon does really, really well. Yeah, I, so I get that. And the, I, I guess the observation for me, Kinsley, is that this is something that independent retailers already do so they're already delivering into consumers' homes, setting things up, consulting with them, uh, and extending the service inside the store into the home. So this was a box that Amazon couldn't check that now they're going to be able to check. Um, but it's not coming without its challenges. So Amazon, you know, there's already people in the distribution network um, kind of complaining that Amazon is going to force their hand and they're saying, okay, if there's an installation of a washer and dryer, that their expectation is that it gets done in 30 minutes and that's what they're going to pay them to do. But 
the guys handling these goods are like, there's no freaking way you can do that in 30 minutes. You have a lot of times you have to move stuff out of that utility room in someone's home. The path to the room itself may be cluttered. You just can't. So there's going to be a lot. And, the, and the, they're so vicious when it comes to cutting costs and trying to pay as little as they can for those services so that they deliver ultimate value to the Amazon member, Prime member. So um, I think they have some stuff to work out, but you know, it is definitely giving them or adding a dimension to what they do that they don't currently have. And it wouldn't surprise me, given the amount of money that they have, that they consolidate. I mean, could you see it, right? Instead of just you know, using a existing 3PL or they don't even need a 3PL, just an, ex, it's an extension or final mile or white glove delivery program, I could see them buying it, right? And, and you know, they're competing with FedEx and UPS now in their own way. I could see them just buying it, consolidating it, you know, and skinning it Amazon so that that entire white glove distribution network ends up being something that they own, not just something that they organize. You just said it at the beginning of the show, or not close to the beginning, about driving stock prices down because now you're a competitor. That's what they did with Zappos. So could something like that happen where they drive a stock price down and then they acquire it just that network? It just did with Wayfair. I think uh, as soon as Amazon announced that, I think uh, the Wayfair stock took a 4% tumble. I mean, it's overcomable. But, man, when you're going up against Amazon, no one's got that kind of money. So they're definitely something to uh, worry about. But, Kinsley, and, let, and, let's talk about the – And the thing is, though, you got to look at it. And think about this for your own business. Amazon is really good at taking something that's very difficult and building process – productizing it and pushing it out into the marketplace. So think about your own business. When something's really hard and you're able to do it well, you put a big moat around your business because it's hard to do and you already have a competitive advantage. You have that first jump out of the blocks. So who's going to want to chase you? It reminds me of my, my friend Craig works for a company called Veterans United. It's one of the largest mortgage home loans companies in the country. And all they do is home loans for veterans. So there, there was a guy, there was a team of guys in, you know, early on um, that were doing home loans. You know, they had sold like this ticket business for like sporting, sporting tickets. And anyway, they sold that and they made some money and they were getting into the mortgage business. And one of the guys on the team said, you know, these, these veteran loans are really a pain. They're hard to do. I think I could put a process around this and we can do this better than anybody. So it's, I think Amazon is really good at looking at what's hard to do, figuring it out, resourcing it. And then they have a big advantage and a big first leap. That's what veterans unite their own business and think, what are we doing in our community? That's going to be really hard for anybody else to do really hard for other companies to compete with. If we do it well and do it first. And that, puts, like I said, a giant moat around your business. Well, and Amazon uh, is really just trying to, I mean, they say, okay, what is the percentage of the population that's going to be cool buying a mattress online or buying a piece of furniture online? So, you know, any of that stuff is going to get delivered, but there's another percentage that expands their market that isn't going to want it just delivered. They're going to want it assembled. So they get it. And they're trying to solve for that. But guys, if you're listening to this and this kind of stuff gives you heartburn, I just want to point you back to the book Kinsley and I wrote called Come Back to Bed. Forbes was nice enough to call it their number one book to read for 2021. So that's kind of cool for us. There it is. Go to. There you go. If you go to fam.news, you can actually subscribe to the fam and get a free audio version of that. Um, but anyway, in the book, we talk about all the, all the reasons and all the ways that independent retailers in this country can kick Amazon's butt, right? You don't have to be a victim of what's happening with these guys. It's all in the book. It's how to connect to human beings. It's how to create a brand that is so compelling and awesome that people love who you are. Um, there are traffic generating ideas in there. There are ways to understand your brand, personalize your brand. Um, we talk about what you talk about, how you can talk about, how to get involved in charities, the levers to pull. There's a lot there. The cage method. So the cage method on being creative and bringing the galaxy graph, to, the hatch the method. It's all there. 
there's a lot there. So anyway, check that out, but don't be discouraged by it. I mean, Amazon is a force, there's no doubt, but don't worry about playing their game. Play your game. You're going to be way better at it than they are, and there is so much opportunity in that. So uh, anyway. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, and I was kind of joking around at the beginning about the Amazon hair salon, but then not getting into that business in London of all places because they're just – experimenting yeah they maybe are experimenting but there are some clear signals and business reasons why they're why they're putting together a salon business because they see an opportunity there so people in the salon business are probably shaking in their little space boots the same as some people in the logistics space or the furniture and mattress space are whenever they see this type of thing come in and um <laughs> a couple no go ahead uh, well, I was, it just made me think of, uh, you know, when I thought about the augmented reality stuff, it made me think about Preet and the crew over at Live Furnish. And it really is kind of a way for people to com compete in this space and do it in a way that saves them money. Um, because Live Furnish, man, Live Furnish is so stinking cool. I love what they're doing. You know, I just saw those guys at market, and I'm glad you brought them up. And that's when I just started to make a comment. That's exactly where I was going because they're doing killer stuff in 3D modeling. And so it's like, okay, I can see a mattress in my room um, or I can see a piece of furniture in the room, but when you actually put it into a room, it just brings it to life in an entirely different way. And Preet and his team, uh, John Emmerich, all of those guys, they're just awesome and they're very, very talented. So we're gonna talk more about them. As a matter of fact, I asked him to be on the show to kind of talk to us about 3D modeling and imagery and how important it is. and how cool 3D is and how it can cut costs out of your business. So that's- Let, let me make but, sure that hey, people understand what the heck we're talking yeah, about though, because sure. it's uh, it's live furniture. You can go to livefurnish.com and look at it, but yep. it's basically, you can take a product like a mattress, a photo of a mattress on a white sweep, and you can boom, plug it into a room scene and you can change the room scene from bohemian to something more modern to more of a beach Jungle side- thing vibe you could just do anything in the background instead of having to like decorate all those things and so it's over whether you're a manufacturer or you're a retailer and you're not getting the assets you need so anyway well we'll let's get those guys on the show preet john you guys got to come on soon let's do it you know i want to before we go here today kinsley i want to just call out ryan uh, spradling and john scott with mattress land i also got to see them in vegas big fans of the show awesome guys john was just he this baller move these we were sitting in a bar having a cocktail and these girls next to us in a uh uh what do you call it a bachelorette party we're getting bugged by this really drunk guy and john's like hey they're with us and <laughs> this guy like took off and tripped over the ropes you know that like keep you out of like a velvet rope thing the stanchion <laughs> this guy got out of there so fast he tripped over the rope and it just went clunk 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 like 10 of them in a row just all fell down security got around the guy it was hilarious what a gentleman he was gave him his chair and he that's a pretty good move and then you know i talked to dr v yesterday from our good friends at miskelly mattress uh mr vanderhoff himself and he had in in the car with him a new guy to the industry his name was jeff johnson he's with purple and uh, he's a trainer. He used to be in Sirius XM Sports Radio. So I told him about you and your radio and television past. But anyway, it was so cool to get to talk to Jeff and hear a little bit about the industry through his eyes because he's brand new to the category. So anyway, shout out to you, Jeff. Welcome to the business. And thank you, Dr. V, for making a really good connection. Looking forward to uh, getting to know him. Awesome. That's very good. Well, hey, Jeff, welcome. And a uh, hey, great job of, of pushing those bums over the velvet rope to that. <laughs> <laughs> to the crew you're hanging out with in Vegas. Next time you can be like, hey, don't show them your tattoo and be like, hey, they're with us. Well, you know what I said to John? I said, John, I got your back. I'm here, man. I'm, I'm your backup. So whatever, what, if, if this goes down, I, I got your back. Now I got the tattoo and I can just, oh, by the way, <laughs> before we go, um, when I was getting the tattoo right before um, he started in. I looked at the guy, the tattoo artist, awesome guy named Bob, and I said, Bob, is this tattoo going to make me look tougher? And he said, Quinn, I think you're going to need a bigger tattoo. <laughs> to look tougher. <laughs> but hey, you got to be careful because the next thing you know, you could be looking like Joe Exotic, the Tiger King's next husband. 
Um, okay, I'm gonna try to avoid that. <laughs> uh, if you have, uh, wherever you get your podcast, be sure to leave us a review. Subscribe at fam.news. And also make sure you know that if you subscribe to the FAM Audio Stories podcast on iTunes or wherever, um, every story that we publish on FAM.news goes live there first. So when you subscribe, you're going to get it to your app or wherever you get your podcast right away. And uh, hey, Quinn, um, great hanging with you today, brother. Great being with you too. Everyone, don't forget, leave us a review. We'd really appreciate it. Um, We like to get the reviews because it tells other people inside the industry that there's something valuable here. Also share this, share the fam with some people. We're building that up, the audience. We've been really uh, traffic already, so that was pretty cool. Already in month one, I think we were both shocked at the number of people. So anyway, so check that out. And uh, whatever you do, don't be discouraged by the show today. There's lots of stuff for you. Um, Amazon is a force, there's no doubt, but you can be better than that and you can win the game if you play your game. So stay tuned, stay connected to the fam, and there's all kinds of information that will make us all better. It's the campfire you need to be sitting around. You can bounce on it. What is a hybrid? It's like peanut butter jelly, peanut butter chocolate. Hybrid so tight, there's no way that you could topple it. Hybrid on my wrist, that's a calculator watch. We add ourselves together and we take it up a notch. Got the airflow, yo, keep you cool as that. Yeah, disco foam alone.